presentation of TFNN. The Tom O'Brien Show is produced every business day. Tom takes your phone calls toll-free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Let's go to our man, George, in Newport, Richie. George, what's going on, brother? Hello, Tom. Good afternoon. How are you? I'm doing great. Yourself? Yeah, great. I've been following you for the last two years, listening to your show. Well, thank you very much. Nice I appreciate it, Judge. All the hard work you've done for us over the years. Well, I really appreciate and, you calling uh, and saying hi. My pleasure, Tom. Okay. Uh, to your show. Thank you, man. Have a great one. It's safe one. Day. Appreciate it, man. Now, Tom O'Brien. <laughs> well, welcome, folks. This is Tom O'Brien of TFNN. We go five days a week. We go seven hours a day. We go 24 hours a day in the internet at TFNN.com. Always remember, folks, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. Hope everyone's having a great day, safe day. It's a TGIF, folks. Let's make it a great one. Be impeccable with your word. Manifest your true intentions. Regardless of what language you speak, your intent will be manifested through the word. What you dream, what you feel, and what you really are will be manifested through the word each and every day. Market wise, let's take a look at it out here. We have the Dow Industrials down 76, NASDAQ up 6, S&P's off 6.5. Gold, gold contract up $30.60, trading at 2,348 an ounce. We have silver up 51 cents. $29.58 an ounce, light sweet crude flat, $78.53 a barrel, notes and bonds. 10-year note, up three ticks, trading 110.26, the 30-year up 18 at 120.13, and King Dollar. King Dollar is trading up 347 ticks, 105.542, Euro 107, Yen 157, British Pound, at 126 to 1 US dollar. Our phone number is 877-927-6648. It was called, folks. Wanna know what's going on in your world. Now, I'm gonna do something different out here because come next week, this is gonna get really intriguing. Let's pull this up again. Because where do you see this? This is one way or the other, something's gonna, let me do it this way, NVDA. There's an ETF, folks, okay? Let's see, high return. Okay, here we go. Now, particularly if you're up, if you trade, I know we have plenty of traders that trade NVIDIA as well as Apple, okay? So, you gotta wrap your head around this for a second. Because next Friday, okay, there's gonna be a rebalancing of the XLK. Now the XLK, okay, Let's see the weight structure. The XLK, uh, large mid-cap stocks, the largest investment allocation in the United States. Let's see. So the holdings in the XLK go like this. You get Apple is 22%, Microsoft is 22%, NVIDIA is 5.9%, okay? Now, watch what happens here. Okay. A weak relative performance on June 14th for Apple and Microsoft could force the technology select sector fund to sell shares of the Laggett and buy NVIDIA with the proceeds. Still, it's now less likely that the ETF will have, will have to unload over 11 billion of Apple stock and purchase 10 billion uh, of NVIDIA stock due to Apple's 11% three-day rally. Now, what's intriguing here is that, you know, I've been on to this for a few days and I was really, I'm, I'm looking, I'm saying to myself, you know, I'm wondering, if the fund itself decided that, man, you know what, I'm going to juice Apple so we don't have to get into this mess, okay? So let's see what they say here. A forced sale of 11 billion of Apple shares and the purchase of 10 billion of NVIDIA by the XLK look likely on June 10th, but now may not happen. Apple rallied 11% over three days, making it the 71 billion ETF biggest holding and leaving Microsoft number two while NVIDIA three. The final decision on the rebalance will depend on the closing value of each company. Oh, today, okay. So we're gonna know today. The smallest will have a position capped at 4.5 D 
due to diversification rules. XLK index determines size based on each company's float adjusted market capitalization. Okay. Okay, so let me just see here. So NVIDIA is 131. Yeah, so as of right now, Apple would still, they wouldn't have to sell it. This got really interesting, though, because look how, look how this shakes out, folks. X, XLK, watch this. X, XLK. Because the differential, it, it, it's pretty amazing. Here, here's the holding. You can see, as of last week, before Apple made that run, they would have had to sell a bunch of Apple, buy a bunch of NVIDIA, and we would have saw whether it would affect the equity at all. But it doesn't look like that's going to... No, it's not going to happen right now because I can tell by there's no way that what would end up happening, Apple would have to come down about 10 points like ASAP, and I don't see that happening coming into the close. So as I said earlier in the program, we're just going to go sideways here, man. There's no, there's no one's in. No one's in. And when you look at the calendar, this is going to get uh, more so because... Well, it's only the 14th. Yeah, it's only the 14th. We got plenty of time. Because I was just going to say July 4th, but July 4th is off somewhat. Next Wednesday, the market's closed. You know, summer trading is in, though, in a monster way. There's no two ways about that. We look at some of the, uh, we'll go to Tesla. So Tesla, bottom line, Elon not only got the okay on the pay package, you got the okay on moving the legal address to Texas, which I suspect he's going to do ASAP. That's the bottom line. Um, you know, because what ends up happening is that the way, the, the way this is structured right now, it still has to go back to the board. The board will say yes or no. I suspect they'll say yes. And that judge can still, in Delaware, can still can it versus he gets the incorporation in Texas and I suspect they're doing that right now, and they're going to flip that around to Texas, and then what will end up happening is that the jurisdiction in Delaware will have zero jurisdiction. The amazing part <laughs> about this, is no doubt, is that they just gave him approximately 10%, nine, well, 9.5% of the equity of the whole market cap. So that's the new deal. $50 billion, you want a CEO? Pay up, man. <laughs> I'm only joking, of course, okay? There's nothing like, he's, he's just a different animal, man. And he's getting a different pay grade because of it. The thing that's amazing to me, actually, looking at it, though, because there's, there's a lot of long-term, very committed buyers to Tesla. And when you look at it, man, I mean, we were talking about it when he was selling it at $412, man. I don't get it. I, what I don't get sometimes is that how can these folks, yeah, it went to 414. He was selling up here at 400, 412. The stock's cut in half. They have millions of shares and they just keep them. That, that's the part that blows my mind sometimes. But it is what it is. Stay right there, folks. We'll come right back. We have the Dow Industrials right now trading down 87. NASDAQ is up two. SP's off seven and a half. We'll come right back. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. 
This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk. So why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. The Dow. Dow's off 90. Nasdaq is up 7. S&P is down 6.5. And, and we go take a look. There we go. Let's just take a look at some of the he higher volume equities. Which the volume is going to be anemic out here today. So you get NVIDIA up a couple bucks. You get Tesla down 4. Apple's off 2. Carnival's down 1. Inside the uh, NDX 100, which is still positive by 66 points, uh, Adobe. Adobe is up 14%. You got Broadcom up 3.5%. Sirius Satellite is up 3 And uh, what is this? Not sure what it is. MDB. MDB. What do you do, MDB? Let's say. MDB. Okay. Mongo. Developed database. The company provides open source database platform. Okay, so the low is 217. The high is 509. Yeah, that, that's a dead cat bounce, man. The thing has got smoked. Yeah, big time. So taken away from the NDX, even though it's up 67 points, you got Moderna down 3.5. Yeah, on semis off 3.5. Uh, uh, Constellation Brands is down 2.5, and, and Tesla is down 2.5. Let's go to Adobe. So Adobe's been on the way down. I mean, it got a nice pop last night on its numbers, but guess what? There's nothing here, man. Yeah, you take a look at this. What we did, so Adobe's, this last six months is down from 638. Two weeks ago, it hits 433. Now it's up almost 100 bucks there, but it's right into the gap again. Let's see, put this back in a weekly for a second. Okay, that's a good buy, that's for sure. Let's take a look. So the whole deal, we did a just over fifty percent retracement. Now this is intriguing, actually. This got a, this is a good sign of strength, man. Off the lows, you see it kind of clear. It really is. So this is going to be something you want to keep your eye on. Actually, we'll see whether I, you know it'd be great if it comes back and test your trend line because you broke the downtrend. That's saying that you know we're going to get back to six twenty eight, six thirty eight. You know, you broke that downtrend, you broke it with volume. So we'll see the type of retracements that that we get out here. Uh, gold, let's go to the gold contract out here. And, you know, you get the dollar back in the higher range. It didn't affect gold out here today. Well, it didn't affect the, the physical metal. The physical metal, 150,000 contracts. Now, we need more contract volume than that. It's, it's, listen, I'll take what they're going to give us. But 
you, you, we should be hitting a couple hundred thousand contracts out and we're not. So, you know, it never, it never got to the, well, let's see, no, we busted that. Well, we went to 2304, I believe. Yeah, 2304. But it still, it really tested, it, it did test. It tested on Monday. Last Friday, we came down hard with volume. We tested Monday, had some good volume on Wednesday. Wednesday, we did uh, 242,000. And back down yesterday with light volume. Now, today with light volume is not cool, but we'll see how this shakes out. We go to the GDX. We take a look at the GDX. Now, my take here is that we're going to basically bust this level. You know, now today, this is a good day. Uh, we went to 32.96, rejected it. 12 million shares, light share volume, and it's holding the bottoms right now. You know, that being said, this is the thing that has me spooked right there. And take a look at the dollar, and you can see, you know, this dollar's in the high range once again. Now, that plus, this is the big one. We take a look at the world markets. Europe, you know, since Macron has called a snap election, which will start, oh, by the way, on June 30th, okay? They have a whole different ball game. But when you look at these equities, man, uh, these indices, they've got absolutely smoked, man. Yeah. I'll do the DAX first in Germany. And that, that, the, the, the key, folks, here is that this is a one-world market, man. So when you get Europe down like this, when we have, well, the Dow has already been down, okay? You know, bottom line, we're going to get follow-through here, man. Come on, give me this thing. Why are you being so slow? There we go. Okay. So if you take a look at the DAX first in Germany, and the DAX normally likes to trade with the, uh, the NDX, which, is, which it absolutely isn't. You can see the bottom line is that, you know, you were at the highs, you know, two or three weeks. You come down, and I'm not going to have today's volume, but you're going to see you had an expansion yesterday on the way down. This... The DAX is trading 18,000. That's on its way to 17,600. The CAT in France, and this is where it started. It has to do with the, this has to do, folks, by the way, with their bond spreads. And you can see this, man. This is just smoked. And what the market's worrying about, whether it's going to be the left or the right, um, is that they're going to be spending a lot more money. So you can see, when we take a look at the cat, the cat is back to January of this year. And if we put the volumes on it, you're going to see that we definitely got an expansion of volume. I put this on a weekly. And you're going to see on the weekly, now this is where it gets really wild, you're actually back to... April of 2023. Now, we don't have to get to there, that's for sure. But when you see indices across Europe down, guess what? Our money managers are just, they're not just as much into Europe as the United States, but <laughs> all that money that's running around the world, folks, okay, one does affect the other. That's, that's the bottom line. So we'll see how this shakes out, meaning... Um, I suspect before July 4th, because what you do have is that, well, here, let's do the Dow. Let's bring the Dow up, because the Dow has been leading on the way down. NASDAQ has been leading on the way up. We take a look at the Dow, and we put this on a weekly. Now, this is still in a consolidation. That's all it really is. In. You know, we came off the highs of uh, 40,000, um, and... You know, you're 1,500 underneath that. It's not that bad, actually. If I look at the diamonds, we'll do the diamonds so you can get the volume and price simultaneously. Put this on the same two-year weekly. Same setup. But you can see here, look at this. That's a high-volume low right there. We're going after that. 376. That's 10 points down from where we are. That's a high-volume low right there, man. Oh, okay, this is cool. Let's do the high of the low. 
So the high of the low, I think, is where we are right now. The high of the low is 383.82. And we hit, oh, look at this, we hit 383.63 today. Okay, well, you know, when you look at it this way, this is actually bullish. You know, we didn't reject lower price yet, so it's not bullish. But you can see what I'm talking about. On a weekly, we did 13 million, but the high of the low is 23 million. So, but there's going to be something here for everyone. Bulls, bears, pretty wild. Dow, Dow Industrials right now down 92. Nasdaq's up eight. S&P's up five and a half. Come right back. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry Pesavento on Friday, June 14th and Friday, June 28th this month for his live trading sessions, where you'll sit right beside him as he trades the market live. For this month only, enter code LarryJune24 and save $50 off your first month. For all the information and to reserve your spot today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This portion of the Tom O'Brien Show is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Welcome back, folks. Sit down. Dow's down 92. NASDAQ is up 4. S&P's down 7. Let's go into that silver contract and take a look at silver. So, silver out here is trading... 2662. 
it's back at support. Yeah, see this right here? This is not good. So yesterday, let me put this. Yeah, the way this is set up yesterday, let me do the SLV for a second. That is a high volume low again yesterday, so that's going to get tested too. We'll do the SLV, which is the ETF for uh, the silver market. Yeah, it's backing down with light volume. You get a high that has good volume, you're backing down with light volume. Twenty three ninety though is game, man, right there. Let's see from the top. The top is twenty nine fifty. Yeah. You know it gets interesting if you remember uh oh, what was his first name? I can't forget it. We had a guy from British Columbia that used to call all the time. And what we've really figured out is that when you get these dojis in the middle of a move, a lot of them that's a halfway move. And the way this is set up it actually works out. I'm, I'm speculating, of course, okay? But we're down like three and a half off the high where the doji is, and three and a half more gets you basically at that 23.90. And then what that is, that's coming back to the breakout area. You're coming back with lighter volume. And then if we put this up simultaneously, it's probably a 50% retracement. Just a little over a 50% retracement. Right now, we just hit, let's get interesting. No, it's more than that. What's that? No, 0 0.382. Yeah, it's about, we're, we're, we're just over a 0.38. We're, we're in between a 0.382 and a 5 all right now. But, hey, this is going to be, this is going to be a wild one. I mean, I haven't been, well, I haven't been bearish in a long time. I haven't been bearish gold in, I don't, I don't know how long, a year maybe. Um, and, and, and the bearishness that you're hearing, I just think we're going to take a wicked hit. Fast, furious, flush it down, come back up. So we'll, we'll see where that shakes out. But. And that's all about that dollar, man. That's, that's what it's all about. We go to the, uh, let's go take a look at, <laughs> one, of, one of the only equities thus far, you know, that is a high flyer that, that hasn't gapped up. Well, there's a couple of them. Amazon will be one. Google would be another. I mean, because these high flyers, man, I mean, you talk about gapping up. They, they're, they're averaging a gap up of over like 12%, which is about as intense as you can get, particularly because we're talking about uh, market caps and the amount of shares that are out there that are just unbelievable. There's no doubt. Um, what is interesting here, and I can't find I can't do it right now, but I'll find it on the on the uh, uh, commercial break. There's, there's an article out here today. This is pretty cool, man. One second, see if I can get this thing. And what it's about, now I certainly don't, oh, here it is right here. Now you wanna know this. Okay, so check this out. Now I don't, I don't see no pullback like 2000, folks, okay? What this is, the headlines, stocks trade like March 2000 dot com era peak. Now, yeah. He has a couple things in here. Now, this is a Bloomberg article that you probably can pull up, folks, okay? But here, check this out. This is pretty cool. Um, okay. So, U.S. actually closed at all-time highs Thursday, though you might not know it from looking at a random list of single-stock performances. Indeed, a little less than half of the members of the S&P 500 are trading above their 50-day moving average. Only 43% of the broader Russell 3000 can make that claim. That's an unusual set of circumstances, to say the least. Even odder is the fact that twice this week, the S&P has managed to rally with less than 200 individual names up on the day. That's a testament to the top-heavy nature of the market. But over the last month, that sort of thing has happened with frequency that we've only seen once before in three decades. And that was March 22nd of 2000, two days before the dot-com era peak in the S&P. A funny thing happened, now I'm, I'm reading you the article, folks. Uh, a funny thing happened on the way to the equity rally yesterday. After the close, I had a look 
at a list of 20 stocks that I like to keep an eye on. Only five of them were up on the day, which seemed a bit unusual given the S&P and NASDAQ complex had managed to outgo a rally. I decided to look a bit further under the hood and what I found was pretty messy. The first port of call was to check out the S&P Advanced Index, which simply measures how many index constituents rally on a particular day. Only 185 names finished in the green yesterday, so clearly the single stock scuffles were not isolated to the list that I happened to look at. And pouring through a time series of the advanced index, I noticed something odd. On Tuesday, the market also rallied with just 182 names up on the day. That seemed a bit unusual, so I decided to tot up a rolling one-month tally of trading days in which the S&P finishes higher with the advance reading of less than 200. Turns out it happened four times since May 28th. Going back to the inception of the advance index, which started in 1996, the only other time we've seen a narrow rally with that sort of frequency was the aforementioned observation in March of 2000. That, that statement there is pretty intense, folks. Now, well, that sort of thing is a headline grab, but it does not necessarily mean that the equity market is going to top immediately. Still, the frequency of the observations does seem to say something about the nature of the market. Narrow rallies occur more often when valuation is elevated and concentrated within a small cohort of names. That's been the case recently as investors make the individually rational decision to chase performance, either by allocating directly to the tech AI mega caps or by purchasing index products, which is tantamount to the same thing. I looked, I looked some other metrics to get more perspective on the nature of the market. First, I tried to put the confluence of the S&P trading at all-time highs of the majority of the members trading below their 50-day moving average into some sort of context. The scatter below overlays the two series using daily observations going back to 1990. Over the simple period, there have been 698 separate closes at all-time highs. Well, you, this you can't make a thing out of. Let's see. Just 13 of them have seen less than 50% of the member stocks trading above their 50-day displaced moving average. Two of them came in June 98, and, and that was July 14th. That was a killer. Yeah, stay right there, folks. Come right back. Dow's down 88, Nasdaq's up 7, S&P's down 5. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter. 
a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I'm O'Brien. Welcome back, folks. At Dow. Dow's off 95, Nasdaq's up 4, S&P's down 6.5. So my point in that, that article, folks, more than anything, is that there are similarities of where we are right now. In fact, about a month ago, I was bringing up the aspect that this was trading, this market was trading like a 1999-2000. The key has to do with the amount of gap higher when you come in at the open. You know, and 1999, you know, the difference would be is that there'd be 15 stocks that would gap higher. <laughs> Just buy, it was almost like you buy anything and you walk in in the morning it's gapped up, you close them. At the end of the day, you, you hope to buy something else, walk in the next day, close them again. You know, so we'll, we'll see where this shakes up, but we've certainly got a huge amount of gaps higher. Fundamentally, there's a big difference because in, 2000, in 1999, they were just selling eyeballs, you know, and a lot of those eyeballs were actually um, fraudulent, that's for sure. You know, because the deals that were done there, if you remember, if you were around at that point, the deals that were done there is that the Internet companies, they were swapping, basically, you know, I give you $200 million for ads or whatever, you give me $200 million back. You know, all that come out after the fact, just like, the, you know, the deal is, we know when there's downtrends, particularly after um, a huge run up, that's when the tide goes out and you find out who has a bait and suit on or doesn't. And there's, there's no doubt a lot of that's happening in the market now. But most of that is actually happening in the commercial real estate market right now. There, that's, that's where this thing has really got uh, pretty heavy. There's, there's no, no two ways about that. And then the, oh, here, so check this one out. Oh, this, you got to look at this. Okay, so check this out. This is... Where are you, Blackstone? Watch this. This is Blackstone. It was a deal that was just done at the close yesterday that you got to know about because this is when things are desperate. Okay, let's see. There it is right here. So check this out. So what has happened in the commercial real estate deal, folks, okay, is that you have a huge amount of professionals as well as retailers retail clientele that's in it, okay? Now, Blackstone has been out here pounding the, the table for over six or seven months that they think this is one of the best opportunities to buy <laughs> commercial real estate, okay? As they're doing that, right, they're basically selling real estate or trying to sell real estate, and this is one deal. Now, look at this deal, man. This is, this is, this is, so... For you and I, as, you know, retail, you know, investors in general, what this deal is, is that, let, let's picture, and I did this in, what year? 1989? Yeah. In 89, I was developing some property. I had one six-unit building sold in one day. A year later... I sold them in one day, six units, 250 grand. A year later, three of them were under foreclosure for 125, right? 
I had three units left in another building. I sold two of them. The last unit, it was just too late, period. So I said, okay, forget it. I'll finance the building, right? <laughs> Bottom line is that I financed the deal, right? Never got the money. Forget it. Do you know what I mean? Because that's, yeah, and you, when you do that, you're financing the deal just to get out and you're crossing your fingers and hope that, you know, you can go. But bottom line, this is the first time that it happened in the public REIT market. So check this out. Blackstone put a portfolio of student dorms up for sale. It worked behind the scenes to make the deal even more attractive. First, the firm dangled the option for the buyers to take over $800 million in debt that had already been negotiated at low prices. And after the bids came in, Blackstone stepped up as a provider of below market financing, bringing the total package to a billion. KKR and company won the deal, agreeing to buy the properties from the 59 billion real estate, Blackstone Real Estate Income Trust. The sale was announced in time, but and here we go. For a crucial April shareholder call, when President John Gray said the 7% premium breed got for the Dom sale was among inconvenient facts for our critics. Okay, so I'd be one of these critics right now. You know, and he's saying, now watch what he's saying. He's saying they get a 7% premium, okay? The private negotiations described by five people familiar with the process underscore real estate owners are digging deep into their financial toolkits as they look to facilitate sales and command highest prices they can in today's weary market. Across the industry, big asset managers are casting around the for financial tactics to grease deals and drum up cash. This is the only instance, listen to this, of seller financing in REIT's history. In these deals, it becomes a lender of sorts, forfeiting the right to be paid up front in full. These finances, more typically used for struggling assets, of course, also tend to make it easier for buyers to raise the bid. The company has signals is ready in for a potential inflection point President John Gray said real estate values are bottom. Seizing on the fast-growing sectors was key to how Blackstone built its reputation in real estate, and the firm has been eager to have a massive REIT find ways to capitalize on one of the worst real estate commercial markets in more than a decade. Now, there's no doubt that Blackstone did get into the single-family deal when everything went south. But that's a totally different deal, folks. And, and the reason that was a totally different deal is that you were buying things 30 cents on the dollar. And they're all single families. <laughs> and the bottom line, 30 cents on the dollar, you couldn't even build half the house. So you were buying houses at like half the cost of even a build. Okay? Anyway, you get the gist of it. Their bottom line is that they just did a billion dollar deal that they get no money for, the clients get no money for, and you know the bottom line is that they're crossing their fingers hoping that they will get paid. Because it's, it's no non-recourse, someone's taking it over, now KKI's taking it over, of course, thinking that, okay, maybe we are close to the bottom. And listen, I, I think we're close also. I mean, but I don't think we're there. Because what has happened is that if these rates don't go down, this is, what I've found is this. It's, you know, it's just like a trade. You know, like, a, like when you go down, when things are really bad, you go down, you go down, you go down. And, and then the last leg down is like the worst leg down. That's where I think we are with office buildings and apartment buildings. That, you're that close. And what that has to do with is that the refinancing of the whole ball of wax. So... You know, we'll we'll see where this whole thing does shake out. But the way that they're pumping it, and specifically, you pump on on one side, but yet you're moving out on the other side, and you're moving out and giving them the first mortgage, not not the second mortgage, the first mortgage. That's when you don't have a buyer. You know, and you know what, what folks are always saying, and I brought this up a million times before. They're, they're saying, okay, listen, you know. Real estate is not moving, and it's frozen. Well, we know the difference. When it's frozen, the prices are too high. Because in the stock market, the bids would just go down. In the real estate market, different ball game, man. You hold out. Stay right there, folks. Come right back.
The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The reality is that navigating financial markets can be risky. Markets can be chaotic and difficult to understand. Having the latest market advice can help you turn this chaos into a key for creating winning trades. At TFNN, we understand that it can be hard to find reliable market news. That's why each of our market experts offers their very own market newsletter a must-have tool for every trader out there striving to find an edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets so you can analyze the market before you trade. Try any of our great newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Just visit the Newsletters tab on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN educating investors don't forget you can listen to tfnn live on your mobile device 24 hours per day go to tfnn.com then hit watch tiger tv that's tfn.com then hit watch tiger tv Welcome back, folks. Let's take a look at Robin Hood markets for a couple of tigers out here. The low 791, the highs 2428. And right now we are trading out at 2245. So you get a base. Okay, so this is an ABC up. One second, let me do this. 2055. 10, 10 bucks. Gets his 26, 22. Let's stay there. 26, 22 is the ABC up. Put this on a monthly. Yeah, it's stay right there. 26, 22 is the ABC up. And we had a question about, you know, why was I basically saying, uh, let's see. My recommended holders of REITs to sell them. I mean, if you're in a commercial REIT, you got to really wrap your head around this thing, man. Because what has happened, even in the, the public market, there's been problems. Meaning that, you know, in some of these commercial REITs, the amount of losses have been, like, extraordinary, not small. I mean, huge. So, you know... On Monday, if you want to send me over what REITs we're talking about, I'd be happy to bring them up. But, you know, commercial REIT, you got to really watch out for. The, me the medical REITs, too, are starting to, to have some problems, man. That's the bottom line. 
And th this all goes back to the financing. If they can get financing and, you know, move ahead four or five years, they're going to be fine. Because if you remember, one thing I wanted to bring up with Blackstone, too. If you remember, Blackstone as well as um, Kushner, right? That Both of those bought buildings at the high of the market. Kushner actually was the top of the market in Manhattan. Blackstone was the one right behind them. Now, they both made out because it took them about five or six years to get the, the value back, but they got it back because now we're talking 2007, 2008. Have a great Father's Day, a safe Father's Day, folks. Come back and visit Tommy Monday morning, 9 a.m. Have a great one, folks. Have a safe one.